So also I'm French, I'm Yvan Petillo, I'm a professor in Aratwat University, I'm going to do the presentation in English. Um, so my, uh, my presentation is really some of the work we've done in the lab about uh, marine robotics for offshore renewable energy. Um, so uh, we know that offshore wind is a key element of the net zero equation and about 30% of the cost is IRM, which stands for inspection, repair and maintenance. And in Britain, certainly there's a lot of wind farms being built offshore. And currently they are um, inspected and repaired by large ships with man crews. And uh, if you look at the North Sea, there's gonna be lots and lots of them. And Basically, it won't scale if you still use large ships, and we're trying to move from uh, the current solution, which involves people on site, to a solution where we're going to use robotics. And that started about four years ago, four or five years ago, when we had a big project called Orca, which was funded by the UK government, and we started to look at the, the problems associated with this. And so the, the, the vision, was to move from what you see on the left, which is large ships deploying people and divers and ROVs, to a system where you have a remote, a remote uh, unmanned system being able to deploy robots to do the inspection and the repair. Uh, and so we've been working on this for about four or five years, and. Uh, the requirements really, if you look at it, is to have good 3D maps of the environment, some semantics associated to that, some autonomous mission planning of both the surface vehicle and the underwater vehicle, and manipulation capabilities. So I won't cover all of these this morning, I'll just cover the first two really. And so what we're trying to do uh, and we're working together with Imperial College and uh, a company called Fugro to, to do this, is to, to be able to extract from a, a 3D model, which you can see on the right-hand side, uh, which is just effectively visual data. And what we want is to build a semantic map. So we have to start from, on the left, 2D segmentation, to segment, which in this case is an anode, on the on the structure uh, and then build that into the 3d map so we can fig figure out what we're looking at in able to do the in able in order to be able to do the mission planning and the second thing we want to be able to do is to uh, build an affordance map for manipulation capability so being able to say this this object you're seeing you can interact with it in a number of ways so you can grab it in this way, you can touch it in this way, etc. So that when we come to manipulation, we have the right information. Um, so that's quite a, a, an ambitious target. And uh, we have a, a number of projects starting now to try to tackle this problem. So I'll first recall what we've done. And the second long-term objective, sorry, is to integrate manipulation. Uh, so at the moment, we're working on a vehicle like the one you see on the left, which is called the Blue Essence, which can deploy an ROV. And uh, one of the things we're trying to do in the short term is to integrate sonar and video together. And it's a project called AWARE. And then in the medium term, we also want to add manipulation capability, so we have the whole capability in the future. Um, so what we did first, uh, I'm not a computer vision guy, uh, Sen Wong, who's now moved to Imperial College, is. And, um, but we, we traditionally worked in, with sonar uh, in our lab and we decided to, to explore video. So we, we built a 3D uh, a stereo camera system with embedded computing in it using a number of Jetson systems to be able to do 3D SLAM on the fly, but also to be able to do mission planning autonomously from that platform. And so we have different um, 
dif different versions of this. One is the, the one you see, the yellow one, which is a big system that goes onto our SAP CI ROV, and a small one which goes onto the blue ROV on the right. Um, so I've got a, a video, it's quite a long video, but I'm just going to skip through it, showing roughly the achievements we've had uh, on this project. So this is the system working on a blue ROV in the lab. So the tags are not for navigation, they're here to do ground truthing of the navigation. So we have the same system without the, the tags. Now what we can do, I'm going to pause here. Oops. What we can do is build a 3D model of the environment you can see here in our base. And that, that 3D model is quite crude, uh, but it's enough for navigation. And we build that in real time, and that enables us to plan the trajectory of the, of the vehicle. So the vehicle can autonomously de detect and select a number of posts that would maximize the information about the structure. And the, 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 the light green one is the one that is preferred by the system. But at any time, you can also yourself interact with the system and say, I want you to change your position. And what's nice about this system is that we embedded obstacle avoidance in it. So as you build the 3D model, you're also making sure avoiding any of the obstacles you've already detected. Uh, so I don't know if I can play again yet. So I'm going to skip to. So one of the first thing we did was deazing because we know, as uh, David said, that underwater it's really tricky. So this image is from a quarry. We're taken by the, the raw image on the left, and we're using polarized camera to do some uh, deazing. So on the right hand side, you can see the the the, the output of the deazing. Uh, in this case, in a very light environment, uh, and that's enabled us to then do the the SLAM algorithm. So the SLAM algorithm, we've integrated DVL, camera, and IMU into the system. So this is uh, an example of a, a 3D reconstruction from, from an offshore uh, platform. We did trials in Blyce, which is a, a place where they have platform in the south of England, no, south of Scotland, north of England. And that's enabled us to build a 3D model. So what you see here is the live 3D model being built uh, from, from the system. And um, this is the system being used in earnest. So that was real data taken from a SAP CI ROV offshore. And so the advantage of adding DVL in the system and IMU is that uh, you, you can have strong currents and so sometimes you have no, no visibility or no images in the field of view with any features. And if that happens, you lose track with your, your SLAM system and it's really hard to then uh, re regain track. Uh, and after that, we can do a dense 3D reconstruction using photogrammetry. Um, and I'm going to stop there, the video, I think, because after that, it's not so interesting. Uh, oh, we have done something wrong here. I'm trying to. Okay, so the, the, the next thing we did is to, to look at the semantics. And we... Uh, we've done this both on optical and sonar images using uh, typically few shot learning techniques. Because underwater, we can't use the, the, the modern uh, deep learning algorithm, which uh, require a lot of training data because we know we, we have limited samples. So we are focused on few shot learning. Uh, I've put the papers at the bottom. And we've been able to both. Uh, identify things on, on image, optical images and sonar images. And this is an example of a pipeline data where we're tracking a pipeline and we're finding the anode in this case and the field joints, uh, which are the yellow, yellow squares appearing. Um, 
And with that, we can build a 3D model where of the of the the the, the, the system where the the different elements are. And that's another example where we've trained to recognize a pipeline in this case on some data we had. Uh, and what's interesting is with Fushot Learning, we were able to very quickly adapt that to a, an a, a video from YouTube of the pipeline. So that means you can really quickly adapt your algorithm to new conditions and new environments and new pipelines. Uh, which which is very useful, I think, for operational uh, applications. Um, so at that stage, we were really quite pleased with ourselves, and we went, okay, let's go offshore to test all that. Uh, and we went last February uh, in uh, Aberdeen to to test all this on the platform, and the visibility was about 40 centimeters. So most of the, the work we had done couldn't be used. Uh, so we decided to go back to Sona. And so I'm going to present work we've done dating back to, oh, God, about 10 years now on uh, imaging with forward-looking Sona. So this is a work we did with the University of Girona. We had a joint PhD. And the idea was to use acoustic images, in this case, an Aris Sona, and see if we could do mosaicing of these images uh, in 2D. And so we developed a system based on, uh, effectively it's a dense alignment system using, using phase correlation to start with. Uh, and then you have a global alignment using a graph slab. And we were able to build some really quite nice 3D, uh, 2D images of structures. So that's a, a chain. And that's taken from uh, images in, in Girona in the pool. That's an example of um, increased resolution and denoising. So it's the same, uh, lots of images of the same boat on the floor. And because you have multiple frames, you can do uh, sub-pixel registration of the frames and get better resolution. And you can also use denoising. Uh, and this is uh, examples of uh, a ship hull on the top, about 20 meters, and on the bottom it was uh, again a sunken boat on the on the bottom of a lock in Scotland. Uh, but it's only 2D, and so it doesn't really help if you want to do what I said at the beginning, which is 3D semantic maps. Uh, so we looked at two and a half D. Uh, using a number of, of systems, uh, and we did that with Cepsi 7 and Cbyte. And you can see the imagery is not the same quality using only acoustics. Um, and finally, we tried to move to 3D. And that's when things become very really quite difficult. Because if you imagine uh, a typical imaging sonar, you've got an aperture from 7 to 20 degrees. And so all the scatterers on, on the NAR will be projected to the same position in your sonar image on the right. And what it means is that you don't know whether what you're looking at is the green dot in front of you or the red dot on the top or the bottom. And so how do you solve this elevation ambiguity? So one way to do it is to move the sonar about. And so one, one, one option is space carving. And what you do there is you say, okay, if I see something on the arc, I assume that it could be anywhere on the arc, and I populate the whole arc with, with data. And then as I'm moving, I'm saying, if I can't see it, it's not there. And you start carving the, the points that you had filled at the beginning. And in simulation, it works really well, as always. Uh, you obviously need the vertical motion and you also need a good uh, short-term navigation to be able to do this. And so when we did that on real data, that's what we had, which I think is still very encouraging. So what you see on the left is three different images at different places of uh, the Blueview sonar data we had. 
And you can see it's quite noisy. It's quite, uh, it's not ideal. On the in the middle, you see a camera image of uh, what corresponds to the top left image of the system. And this is the 3D reconstruction that we had using uh, the navigation data available. So what you should, it, it's effectively a cable, a riser going to the surface. This bit here are buoyancy to keep the riser floating. And this bit here is a chain that's anchoring the riser on the bottom. So it's not perfect, but it's a, it's a start. And certainly you could probably navigate uh, around this and use semantics to build a semantic map. Um, we've tried other techniques using the convolution where you can see the imaging uh, system as a convolution and use the convolution. It gives you slightly better results. Uh, but, uh, and it's less, less memory consuming, but it assumes a, a pure vertical motion, which in practice is quite difficult to achieve. Uh, so we've since moved on a little bit and used space carding with post correction. So basically you, you, we use ICP to try to uh, reconstruct the 3D. And we're able to reconstruct the data I showed you from the, the the pillar in place uh, quite well. Finally, we've been looking at collaborating with Shupan, who is trying to recruit as a PhD student, who's done some very interesting work on uh, sonar and video slam. So you've got a stereo camera, and you use this to, to do your standard slam, but you also have a sonar, and you use the sonar when the visibility is poor. So it's basically combining the two elements I've showed you this morning into a single system. And these are uh, results he achieved. So you can see the in some, some element, the camera, you can't see anything, but you can still do motion estimation from tracking on the sonar side. And when you have good visibility in the imagery, you also use the imagery to do slam. So this system is working in, 2D at sea, and uh, is currently trying to move it to 3D. I think that's the end of the technical side. Uh, so I remind you, that's what we're trying to do, uh, but we'd like to do that in a multimodal fashion. Uh, and we'd like to do it by combining sonar and video, so that when we've got both modalities, uh, we, we can combine them optimally, and when we only have one of the modalities, uh, we can still operate. Because it's clear to me that if we want to adopt autonomous vehicles in real environments, we need to have an all-weather solution. We can't be saying, well, we can only operate when it's a good day and the visibility is five meters. That's not going to work in most realistic environments. Um, so for the submitting experiment, what we're proposing is to bring a, a, a blue roof with a forward-looking sonar, a DVL, an IMU, and a stereo system. So having all of these together, we'll be able to get collocated uh, data. We already have algorithm to do the self-calibration of the IMU and the cameras. Extending it to the sonar shouldn't be very difficult. And what we'd like to have out of that is uh, effectively all the modalities we need to be able to do multimodal 3D mapping. And potentially use this eventually to, to extract the semantics. Um, so we have a number of sonars we've been evaluating. So at the moment, you see the sonar in the lab. We've got the Gemini 1200IK, a BlueView profiler, and a BlueView imager. So the imager we can bring the profiler is quite big, so I don't think it fit on a, on a, on a blue roof. And we've got an Aris acoustic camera, which again wouldn't fit on the blue roof. Now on the right, we've got two ROVs. The picture you see is not the Falcon, it's actually the Fugro we've been using with, uh, in collaboration with Fugro, but we have a SAP CI, but it's 250 kilograms. So we could potentially bring it, but I'm not sure how we would deploy it. 
So I've got a question mark on that. At the moment, we're planning to build, to bring the, the blue roof. And uh, I think that's the end of my presentation. 